الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد the author he mentioned رحمه الله تعالى باب ما جاء في الإقسام على الله باب ما جاء في الإقسام على الله the chapter about that which has come relating to swearing to swearing by Allah upon Allah and to take an oath in the name of Allah or to swear by Allah Azza wa Jal an oath that one will make binding upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he will swear by Allah and he will say wallahi Allah is going to do this or wallahi Allah is going to do that and he to take an oath by Allah uh, upon something and that one will consider it binding or uh, an obligation for Allah to, to do. He will say in this manner. He will say it in this manner like this. And he had to make an oath or a swear by Allah Azza wa Jal. But uh, an oath that he will make binding upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this here many times comes from having conceit and arrogance, from having pride and self-amazement that one he will say the likes of this and one will say for example about so and so that maybe he thinks is on a bad path Wallahi Allah will never forgive him Wallahi so and so will never enter paradise Wallahi so and so is going to burn in the hellfire and from somebody who is alive today for example from somebody who is alive today for example so many times a person he'll look at himself and see himself performing good deeds and he'll look at others and maybe find somebody who is tried by sins and he will look at himself in a good light and look at that person and say, Wallahi, Allah will never forgive him. Wallahi, Allah will never have mercy on him. Wallahi, that man will never enter paradise. Like this, this is what is intended here. ad iqsamu ala Allahi, iqsamu ala Allahi billah. ad iqsamu ala Allahi billah. Ma ja'a fi thalika, that which has come with regards to this. And from the impermissibility of that and from the clarification that uh, to avoid that and stay away from that is from the completion of the obligation of faith and tawheed from the completion of the obligation of faith and from the obligations of of a tawheed so the people of knowledge they clarify first and foremost ad iqsamu ala Allahi thalathatu aqsam ad iqsamu ala Allahi thalathatu aqsam to swear in this manner upon Allah azza wa jal is three different types or three different categories where it occurs in three any different circumstances and the first one is to swear is to swear, uh, to swear by Allah. All of this here is with regards to swearing by Allah. Yani, yuqsimu billah. But it's yuqsimu billah ala Allah. This is the point here. He's swearing by Allah, but he's swearing upon Allah likewise. And he's swearing an oath, making it binding upon Allah. Yani, in, his, in his oath that he's, that he's swearing. So the first one is to do this with regards to something from the affairs of the unseen. To swear by Allah about the affairs of the unseen from something that is established authentically in the Quran or in the Sunnah. For example, that somebody he will say, Wallahi, no, no, no mushrik will ever enter paradise like this. This is allowed. Well, this because this is something that is established in, in, with many evidences in the book and in the Sunnah. Wallahi, Wallahi, no mushrik will enter paradise. Wallahi, the one who dies upon shirk, Allah will never forgive him like this because this is what is established in uh, the Qur'an and in the Sunnah. So this here is not considered blameworthy. This here is not considered bl- blameworthy. Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُونَ يُشْرَخِ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ That Allah he does not forgive those who associate partners with Him. Many those who die upon that. So this is something that is established. Allah Azza wa Jal, He will not forgive those who die upon shirk. Those who die upon shirk, they will never have mercy. They will never see. Uh, the Jannah and they will never enter paradise or he will say Wallahi those who die upon shirk you know, they will never leave the hellfire like this this is something that is true and something that is established in the Quran and the Sunnah Wallahi the believers they will see their Lord in Jannah Wallahi al-mu'minuna yirawna rabbahum haqqan and somebody will swear by Allah about this and this is from the affairs of the unseen yet it's something that is established clearly and it's uh, affirmed authentically uh, on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam either in the Quran or in or in the Sunnah. So this person here is like he's swearing in this manner because of his great certainty that he has about the truthfulness of this issue. And that what he, that's what, that what he was informed about. 
that what he was informed about. When the believer, he swears by the likes of this, Wallahi, the believers, they will see their Lord in Jannah. Wallahi, the believers, they will see their Lord in Jannah. Like this, this is something that is established. So the one who swears in this manner by Allah about this affair, this is because of his certainty and his strong faith and belief in that which the Messenger وسلم, has informed. So therefore, this is allowed. So therefore, this is allowed. The second case, swearing over Allah Azza wa Jal, is whenever a person, he would do that, but he would do that out of strong hope and faith in Allah and having good thoughts about Allah Azza wa Jal. حُسْنُ الظَّنِّ بِاللَّهِ وَقُوَةُ الرَّجَى فِيهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَثِقَةُ بِهِ that a person he will have great trust and great hope and reliance in Allah Azza wa Jal, and then he will he will take an oath in, in this manner, hoping for the aid, hoping for the help, hoping that Allah will fulfill his oath and the like like this. And this is something that uh, has been established uh, in uh, Al Bukhari and Muslim from the Hadith of Anas ibn Malik and radiyallahu anhu. It's mentioned that uh, Ar Rubayya. Uh, الله عنها, she chipped, uh, she, she broke the tooth uh, of, uh, of a young girl. She broke the tooth uh, uh, of a young girl. And, uh, and the people, they wanted to make the qasas. Yani, and they wanted to take the, uh, the, the eye for an eye. And yani, that the retribution will be taken against her. So the people, they tried, uh, her family and the likes tried to reconcile with the family of this young girl and uh, tried uh, to uh, convince them to take the, take the money in place of uh, the physical retribution or to pardon and the likes like this and they refused and they refused and they refused until the extent that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is going to, uh, is going to break her tooth in the same manner. So then uh, at this time, Anas ibn Nadr radiallahu anhu, he, he said, and then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Kitab Allahi al Qisas, ya, ya, ya Anis. He said, Kitab Allahi is Qisas. And he, it's going to be like this, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, in this, in this manner like this. So then he said, Wallahi la tuksaru sinnuha. Then he swore by Allah, he said, Wallahi, her tooth is not going to be chipped. Her tooth is not going to be broken. At this time, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala guided the hearts of those people to, to pardon her or to accept that to accept the, the arsh, or the money and recompense uh, of that. So here he's swearing uh, by Allah over Allah Azza wa Jal with strong faith and strong hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this a reality. So this is something that likewise is allowed. Something likewise that, that is allowed, that a person he'll do that with hope. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned uh, about uh, individuals, maybe there are people that uh, are considered insignificant with the people. And in the eyes of the people, yet with Allah they have a high rank. That if you were to swear over Allah, yani upon Allah, an oath that is binding, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would fulfill his, his oath for him. And yani he would cause that affair to happen in the manner that the individual hoped and swore by. And swore by. And yani out of yani his piety and, and his truthfulness and his faith, Allah azza wa jalla will answer him and respond to him in this manner. So this here, likewise, is not included. The first one and the second one is not included in this chapter. What is intended here is the third affair. And that is to swear by Allah an oath that is to, and to make it binding upon Allah Azza wa Jal in the affairs of the unseen. In the affairs of the unseen. And then to swear in this manner as if it is certain. As if it, as if it is certain <coughs> faith. And to do that any, in a manner restricting uh, putting, a, for example, a restriction on Allah Azza wa Jal, like the one that will say, Wallahi, Allah will never forgive so-and-so. The Wallahi, so-and-so will never enter paradise. And, the, and like this, and he about somebody here in the, that, that is alive today. So he's speaking about the unseen. And then likewise, he is putting restrictions upon Allah Azza wa Jal in his mercy, as if Allah will not forgive yani, this person or that person. And again, many times this comes yani, because of a person's self-amazement and the lies like this. So this here negates the obligation of faith. It's an obligation to not do that. It's an obligation to not do that. This weakens the tawheed in a great manner. So this is why the, the author, he mentioned this issue in the book of At-Tawheed. So he says, عن جندوب ابن عبد الله رضي الله عنه أنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال رجل والله لا يغفر الله لفلان فقال الله عز وجل من ذا الذي يتألى علي؟ so 
So the author, he mentioned the narration of Jundub ibn Abdullahi radiallahu anhu that he said, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, a man, a man, he said, I swear by Allah, Allah will never forgive so-and-so. A man, he said, I, I swear by Allah, Allah will never forgive so-and-so. So then at this time, Allah, he says, who is the one who takes an oath over me and swears over me? And he yata'alla, This is this issue here, you need to swear and make an oath binding upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about affairs that one has no knowledge of. About affairs that one has no knowledge of. In this manner like this. So he says, who is the one who will make the ta'alli alayya? That will swear over me and take an oath binding upon me uh, about something he has no knowledge of. That I would not forgive so and so. Verily I have forgiven him. Verily I have forgiven him and I have invalidated all of your deeds. And I have invalidated all of your deeds. It's narrated by Muslim. The author, he then says, he then says, وَفِي حَدِيثِ أَبِي هُرَيْوَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أَنَّ الْقَائِلَ رَجُلٌ عَابِدٌ And there is uh, another wording by, of this narration, another narration about this issue, uh, narrated by Abu Hurairah رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ that he said, the one who was saying that, he, is, he was a righteous man. He was a righteous man. And it's mentioned in, in uh, Sharh Sunnah, Lil Al Baghawi Rahimahullah Ta'ala and other than that from the books of the Sunnah, the story of this affair, and that these are individuals from Bani Israel, and that there in the there were two of them and they were friends, and one of them Kana Mujtahid and Fir Ibada. And one of them he was uh, striving hard in the obedience of Allah and this was his path and he was upon the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. And another one of them he was tried by sins, but they were friends and they were companions. And every time uh, the, the one who was uh, involved in worship seen his friend uh, upon sin, he would advise him. And he would advise him. And he would advise him over and over and over. And every time he would tell him, Aqsir, Aqsir. Yani kufan hada. And he would stop those sins. Stay away from those sins. And they were friends, but whenever he seen him upon those sins, he would advise him. So finally, uh, it, it occurred that he, he came upon his friend and he saw him upon a major sin. He saw him upon something that is that is very foul, and at this time he advised him again. And the man he says uh, he, he he says he said, "Dani, leave me alone, leave me leave me alone." Ma ba'athak Allahu alayya raqiba. Allah didn't send you over as a as a as a watcher over me. Leave me alone. Leave me to my Lord. Leave me to my Lord. Don't worry about me. This is what the the sinning person said. So at that time the individual he became angry, and this is what he said to him: "Allahi la yafir Allahu lak." Like this, he became angry, and he said this. At this time, and this is the uh, the issue of this story. And then it's mentioned that Allah Azza wa Jal He sent an angel to the both of them and took their souls, and then um, questioned the both of them in this manner. And this was the outcome. This was the outcome. The one who was righteous, and he, the one who was engaged in, in actions of worship, and he, but he made this statement. Uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reproached him and reprimanded him, and uh, and punished him and entered him into the hellfire. And as for the other individual who was upon sin and he was being belittled because of that and that statement was made against him then Allah Azza wa Jal pardoned him and forgave him pardoned him forgave him so at this time and he from the narration of Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu he says takallama bi kalimatin aw baqat dunyahu wa akhirata takallama bi kalimatin aw baqat dunyahu wa akhirata that this individual here he stay he made a statement that destroyed his worldly life and his hereafter this man here, that, that he, he said that, Wallahi la yaghfirullahu lak. One word. He said, I swear by Allah, Allah will never forgive you. I swear by Allah, Allah will never forgive you. He said, Takallama bi karima. He said, One word. Aw baqat. Yani wiped out, destroyed entirely. Dunyahu wa akhiratahu. Wiped out his worldly life and his hereafter. Yani meaning all of his deeds and all of that worship that he was upon and the likes like this, all of this ha had, been, had been destroyed and invalidated. So this is uh, an indication that this is from the major sins and that this is something that uh, brings a great deficiency and weakness to the faith. And again, many times it occurs from being conceited in arrogance and being self-righteous and looking at a person's uh, good deeds and then, and then uh, considering you know, uh, oneself to be high and lofty because of that and looking at others and belittling them and considering them to be, to be worthless or like they're nothing or that Allah will never forgive them. And he and the likes like this, he will look at his own good deeds and say, Oh Allah is going to have mercy on me. And then he will look at others and say, Oh Allah, he'll never forgive them. And the likes like this. All of this is from the traps or the tricks of, of the devil. 
So likewise, uh, from these, uh, this issue here, we see the obligation of having the, the noble manners with Allah Azza wa Jalla. This, this issue continues yani in, the, in the end of this work, having the noble manners and conduct with Allah Azza wa Jalla in every circumstance and situation. And from that, here taking these oaths like this. This is not allowed to swear over Allah Azza wa Jalla, to make a swear in an oath binding upon Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala about the affairs of the unseen without knowledge about the affairs of the unseen without not without knowledge. Even if it was a disbeliever, for example, somebody who was a disbeliever from the worst of them, from the worst of them, he's alive today. It's not allowed to say about him, Allah will never forgive him. Maybe Allah will guide him to Islam and he will become better than all of us. And he will become more righteous and, and closer to Allah than all of us. We do not know. Maybe not today, maybe not next month, maybe next year, maybe 10 years. Maybe 10 years. Maybe somebody will see an individual running on the streets today, involved in much crime. Involved in much evil. And then maybe 10 years from now, 20, 20 years from now, Allah Azza wa will put him in a situation and guide his heart. And he will accept Islam. So we, we, have no, we have no knowledge of these affairs. We have no knowledge of these affairs. So a believer, he will not speak about that. And he definitely will not swear an oath binding upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about these affairs. About these affairs. So this man, he made this one statement and, and it, valid, it invalidated all of his deeds. And it's mentioned that he was... Mujtahid, and he was somebody who had a lot of good deeds. He was somebody who had a lot of good deeds. He had lots of actions of righteousness, lots of worship, lots of prayer, for example, lots, uh, lots of charity. He had lots of righteous good deeds. He's striving in that path. That one word invalidated all of that. That one word invalidated all of that. A clarification of the severity of this issue. So the author, he says, Fihi masail. In this chapter, there are issues here. Al ula al tahbiru min al ta'alli. Allah. <coughs> the first issue is the warning of making a ta'alli. A ta'alli. This is the issue here, swearing upon Allah Azza wa Jal, making an oath binding uh, making an oath uh, binding upon Allah Azza wa Jal about the affairs of the unseen. About the affairs of the unseen that which a, a person has no knowledge of. There's a warning from this. The second uh, issue here is the fact that the fire is closer to one of us than the, the lace on his shoes. Min shiraki na'ilihi. The, the, the na'il, they're the sandals. And the shirak is the, is the strap that goes where the, where the toes go on the sandal. And he, so here the, the author, he's mentioning that the whole fire is closer to one of us than that, than, than that strap on the, on the shoes that he puts on his feet. Athalitha anna al-jannata mithru thalika. And the third issue is that the paradise is similar like that. It's similar like that. And this is also and from a narration which the author, he mentioned previously in the beginning of this work, that that's the case. Those people who will, uh, will enter the hellfire, and there's nothing between them and entering the hellfire except that they will die. Except for them to die. And for them to, 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 to receive the punishment of that in the hereafter. And likewise, those people who will enter the paradise and be admitted to the paradise... It's nothing between them and that delight except that they should die. That's the only thing between them. It's very close. Our souls are, are very weak. And uh, they will leave our bodies whenever Allah decrees. So the one who is going to be in the hellfire, there's nothing between him and uh, that punishment except for his soul to leave his body. And those who are going to have the delight of the paradise and the joy in the hereafter and the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jalla, there's nothing between them and that delight except that their souls should leave their body. So this is something to reflect upon and remember that these issues are very close to us and we do not know which way we will go. But we hope that we will go to the paradise and be safe from the fire. So therefore we have to take the means and to work upon that way and then put faith and trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. Al-Rabi'ah fihi shahidun li qawlihi inna rajula liyatakallamu bil karima. And here the, in the fourth uh, issue here is the is uh, supporting evidence for the statement that has come uh, from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that indeed a man he will say a statement until the end of the hadith. And he, this is an authentic narration. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said indeed a person he will say a statement. Uh, that a man he will say a statement and he will not give it any consideration whatsoever and he will fall on his face and he because of that statement and he into the depths of the hellfire it will, it will, it will cause him to fall into the depths of the hellfire he will make one statement 
He'll make a word and he'll consider it light. And he's backbiting somebody or speaking ill about somebody or taking an oath upon Allah binding and the likes like this. One statement. And he made the wrong statement about the wrong person in the wrong manner, for example. And this statement will cause him to uh, earn the anger of Allah and the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jinn. And on the other hand, <clears throat> another individual, he will make a statement likewise. And he will also not consider that statement. And he will not realize the value or the weight of that statement. And he will earn the pleasure of Allah by way of that. And he will earn the pleasure of Allah by way of that until he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a great indication of the dangers of the tongue. Of the dangers of the tongue. The paradise can be obtained by way of the tongue and it can be lost. It can be lost by way by way of the tongue and it's something that's very loose if a person did not check it and did not control his self control his self so the author he says that the fifth issue here and benefit from this chapter the author he says rahimahullah that a man possibly he may be forgiven because of something that is the most, from the most detestful affairs to him. And this person here, he was upon sin, and he was upon a foul way, and he was upon a bad way. And his companion, his friend, belittled him and swore by Allah that Allah would never forgive him. This is something, no doubt, that a person he would dislike, and he would hate to hear that. He would hate for his friend to come to him and say this to him, Allah, he Allah will never forgive you. His friend, like this. So this is something that would hurt his heart, and he would be detestful for him. But it was a reason for him to enter paradise. But it was a reason for him to enter paradise. So the author, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he has a very subtle benefit here. And he mentioning this affair. So no matter, uh, no matter what happens in, in life, so long as a person is breathing, he's alive, he will never give up hope in the mercy of Allah. He will strive. He will do his best. Even if he's tried with sins, he will keep seeking forgiveness. He will keep realizing his weakness. And he will keep uh, asking Allah to, to pardon him and to overlook him. And the likes like this. And inshallah, the one who is sincere and he is truly uh, trying, Allah Azza wa will guide him. Allah Azza wa will help him. Allah Azza wa will forgive him. Allah Azza wa will forgive him. This person here was an ikana musrifan ala nafsi. He was very uh, extravagant in extremes in, in sins and the likes like this. Yet Allah Azza wa forgave him. After this, the author, he says, Babun la yustashfa'u billahi ala khalqihi. Babun la yustashfa'u billahi ala khalqihi. The chapter that, uh, that one, he should not make a istishfa' with Allah over his creation. What this means is that one will not, it's not allowed to take Allah as an intercessor between his creation. Even the, and the this, this is a, this is a foul way, and this is from, uh, from the affairs that negate the obligation of faith and uh, negate the obligation of a tawheed likewise. And in order to complete the tawheed, a person, he must, uh, he must uh, avoid this in entirety. And uh, taking intercession is whenever a person, he is in need of something, and he's alone, and he's not able to uh, obtain that, and he's needing something from someone. He wants to ask that person for something. Any from the worldly life, for example, he wants to ask that person for something. But that person doesn't know him or doesn't consider him. But the person who is in need, he knows somebody who knows the person he wants to ask. He knows the person he wants to ask. So instead of going directly to that individual, and he, because uh, he doesn't know him, maybe his request would not be fulfilled. But if he goes to somebody who is close to that individual, and intercedes on his behalf, then most likely now his request will be fulfilled. So he will ask him either maybe this person, he's in need of a particular benefit or he's in need of someone to take, take off some harms or remove some difficulty or hardship from him. So if he goes directly to the individual because he doesn't have status with that person or a relationship with that person, maybe his request will not be fulfilled. But if he goes to somebody who's close to that person and he asks on behalf of him, then most likely now his request will be, will be answered, will be answered. So here to make al-istishfa'u billah, to make al-istishfa'u billah ala khalqihi is to, 
it is to ask Allah to intercede with so and so from the creation on behalf of you. You understand that? We have the one who needs the intercession, we have the one who the intercession is asked from, and the one who is going to go intercede. The one who's going to go intercede. The majority of the time, the one who's going to go intercede, he doesn't have anything. And the one who's going to go intercede, he's, he's under the one who is, is being requested. And he, he's going to go ask somebody for something. And the majority of the time, the one who's asking, he doesn't have. Had he had it, there's no need to go to somebody else. And the one that's going to intercede on behalf of that person, likewise, he's under the individual as well. For example, maybe there is, a, uh, there is a, an administrator in a university, for example. He works in the administration high up in the in the university and he's able to get people accepted and he's the one who takes care of acceptance uh, in the university. So there's a person, he wants to become a student in the university, but he doesn't have connections with the people in the administration, but he knows a teacher in the university. He knows a teacher in the university. If he goes straight to the administration and he may be, his opportunity is not that great or not that high. But if he goes to the teacher who has connection with the people in the administration and intercedes on his behalf, maybe his and he, the, the, the possibility will be greater for him to be accepted now because he has someone along with him, strengthening him and interceding on his behalf. So the point is now that the person who's working in the administration, he had, his rank is higher than the, than the teacher. So if the teacher had the ability to give the person uh, acceptance to, to admit the person into the university, the, there's no need for him to go to, to the administration. But the teacher, he does not have that authority. He's, he's under the administrator in this affair. So therefore the student he'll go, or the one who wants to, to, to study, he'll go to the teacher, he'll go to somebody higher and intercede on his behalf. So the point is now that by asking Allah to intercede, to intercede with somebody from the creation on behalf of a person, this is in, re in reality belittlement of Allah. And uh, denying the great status and, and rank and lofty position of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there's no one higher than him, he's the most high. He is the most great, he is the most powerful, he is the most strong. And he's not taken as an intercessor between, between uh, his creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he wants something to occur, he says, Kun fayakun. He says, Be and it is. So, this is what the issue here is about. A shafa'a. A shafa'a. Yani, but the shafa'a will always be from the one who is lower to the one who is higher. And there's nothing higher. And there's no one higher than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no one higher than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the author, he says, and Jubair ibn Mut'im, radiyallahu anhu, anhu qal, jaa arabiyun ila nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, faqala, ya Rasulullah, nuhikat al-anfus, wa jaa al-iyal, wa halakat al-amwal, fastasqi lana rabbak, fa inna nastajfi'u billahi alayka, wa bika ala Allah. So now it's been narrated by Jubair ibn Mut'im, radiyallahu anhu, that uh, a, desert, a desert Arab, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the people have been destroyed and uh, the children are starving and uh, the wealth is perishing and the, the animals and the crops and the likes are perishing and he because of a drought. So therefore, uh, call on Allah to send the rain for us. Call on your Lord to send uh, the rain for us. So then he said, now because indeed we uh, are asking uh, Allah to intercede with you. We're asking Allah to intercede with you and we're asking you to intercede with Allah. So he made a number of statements here. The first one he asked the Prophet Sallallahu to make dua to Allah to send rain. And then he said that indeed we ask uh, Allah and take him as an intercessor with you. You understand this part? We're asking Allah to say, and we're asking uh, Allah to be an intercessor with you, and yani that, that that Allah would intercede with Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as if Muhammad is higher than Allah azza wa jal. We understand that the the, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would intercede on behalf of the people with Allah, but Allah he does not he's not taken as the mediator. Rather, Allah he is the one who is high, and uh, the intercession is not accepted except with His permission, subhanahu wa taala. So this statement this statement here is wrong. And uh, a great error and deficiency in Tawheed. فَإِنَّ نَسْتَشْفِعُ بِاللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ فَإِنَّ نَسْتَشْفِعُ بِاللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ يعني نَتْلُبُ uh, مِنَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يَكُونَ شَافِعًا We ask Allah to, be an, to intercede, to be an intercessor with you and to ask your permission, to get permission for you, 
for the rain to come. <laughs> like, like, like this, this is what he's saying. وَبِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ And with you uh, upon Allah. And we also ask you to intercede for us with Allah. So the first statement is wrong and the second statement is right. Whenever the Prophet Sallallahu heard this, فَقَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهُ means glorified is Allah. Glorified is Allah above any imperfection. And Allah has no deficiency whatsoever. He's high above every weakness and every deficiency. He's perfect from every, from every deficiency. From every deficiency. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Like this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, فَمَا زَالَ يُسَبِّحُ حَتَّى عُرِفَ ذَلِكَ فِي وَجُوهِ أَصْحَابِهِ So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he continued to glorify Allah, subhanallah, subhanallah, over and over until it was, it was seen in the face of his companions. And he meaning that they seen in their, uh, the face of the companions, they're, they're experiencing pain. They're, they're hurting from this. And he, from the fact of the, 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 the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was greatly affected by that whenever he heard that man saying that. That whenever he heard that man saying that, he that, that Allah would intercede with him. That Allah, we, we're taking Allah as an intercessor we, to intercede with you for us for us and he so now it says they're seeking an intercessor so there's one here who's asking for the intercession there's the one here who's going to the intercession is on top yeah on bottom is the one asking for the intercessor on top is the one who the intercession is asked from in the middle is the one who's going to go on behalf of the person on bottom to the person on top and ask for the intercession we understand this so this person now he's he's saying that that he is here on the bottom and he's asking Allah to go to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to intercede for them. So this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he became so angry. Subhanallah, 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 Subhanallah. Until the companions, they, 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 it was in their face like, oh man, that, 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 that it was hurting their hearts from how much the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was disturbed by this statement. So he says, ثُمَّ قَدَ وَيْحَكَ أَتَدْرِ مَا اللَّهِ إِنَّ شَأْنَ اللَّهِ أَعْظَمُ مِنْ ذَلِكَ إِنَّهُ لَا يُسْتَشْفَعُ بِاللَّهِ عَلَى أَحَدٍ وَذَكَرَ الْحَدِيثِ رَوَاهُ أَبُو دَوُدْ So then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said وَيْحَكْ وَيْحَكْ The people of Naraz they say كَلِمَ تَرَحُمٍ وَالتَّوَجُّعْ This statement here وَيْحَكْ is similar to وَيْل Then he's sometimes maybe it has the same meaning وَيْل means هَلَاك وَالْعَذَاب may, may you be destroyed Like this a sign that it's a major sin But, but وَيْحَكْ sometimes means وَيْل And other times it's used to refer to something similar but with a type of pity and that person, he would fall into something not knowing. He would fall into something bad, and he would say or do something wrong, but not knowing, not knowing. So the person, he would say, way hack, way hack, like this. And he, so he's, he's, he's reprimanding him, but at the same time, he's having pity on him. At the same time, he's having pity on him. So this time, this is any from the meanings of this statement here, way hack. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, way hack, do you, do you know who is Allah? Do you know who, who is Allah? And uh, in some wordings, He said, do you know what you're saying? Do you, do you even know what you're saying? He said, do you, even, do you know who is Allah? Is Allah is greater than that. And he, he said, indeed, Allah, the, the, Allah Azza wa Jal, He's greater than that. He's greater than that and more noble. He's, no one, no one will take Allah as an intercession. Uh, 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 with anyone No Allah is not taken As an intercessor With anyone Like this And then he said He mentioned The narration And the narration is Narrated by Abu Dawood And the people of Nadas Have mentioned That, that uh, there are Some weaknesses In this chain But a number of the scholars Have verified That it is authentic And from them Shaykh Qur'an Islam Ibn Taymiyyah And likewise Ibn Qayyim uh, Rahimahum Allah Ta'ala They have considered it To be Hassan And in the chain And in any case uh, The scholars have agreed that the meaning of the narration is correct, and yani that it's not allowed. So the author he says, "Fihi masail al ula in karuhu ala man qala nastashfi ubilahi alaik." The first issue here is the fact that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reprimanded, reprimanded and forbade that person, the one who said that we take Allah as an intercessor with you, we take Allah as as an intercessor with you. So here this person, he made a number of statements. The first one, he asked the Prophet ﷺ to call on Allah and to supplicate to him and ask for the rain. So here, this is a type of intercession. Uh, they're taking the Prophet ﷺ here as an intercessor, and this is allowed. Yani that a person who will go to a righteous man who was alive. He will go to a righteous man who was alive and who was present. 
who is present. And he, what is his righteous meaning then? One, uh, what, what knows about him and what is apparent to him is that he's from those people who are steadfast upon their religion. Yeah, and he, like this, a person who will go to somebody who is alive and is thought good about him and his religion and to request them to call on Allah for them, for different issues. Here they're requesting the Prophet وسلم, while he's alive to call on Allah Azza wa to send the rain. So now we have these people here, the individuals who are in need of rain, and then we have Allah Azza wa who has the authority of the rain, and they're going to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, to ask him to call on Allah to send the rain. This is allowed. This is what he mentioned here, Nastasfi'u, Bika al Allah. We take you as an intercessor with Allah. This is allowed in the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And likewise, it's allowed with the righteous people after him. But it's not allowed with the dead. It's not allowed with the dead. This issue has proceeded in this chapter. And we had a number of classes clarifying that issue of a shafa'a. And that it is not allowed to call on anyone who is not alive. Not for an intercession and not for anything other than that. Other than that. So here the Prophet ﷺ did not refute him from that statement. Or from the statement, He didn't, he didn't refute that statement. Rather this man, he made three different statements here. The Prophet ﷺ, he identified the one that's wrong and he clarified that. He clarified that. So likewise, uh, the benefit from this here as well, that if somebody makes a mistake in their speech or in their, in, in, in their understanding, and maybe they'll say a number of things. Much of that may be correct, but then maybe one of those issues or points that they mentioned is wrong. So that will be identified and that issue will be clarified and they'll be corrected. They'll be corrected. For example, if the children, they say something sometimes and they mention something and it's right, but there's a point in there that's wrong. So that point right there will be clarified. That point right there will be clarified. Or the people and the likes like this. So this is a benefit from here that the, the evils, they're identified and they're clarified from the speech and the statements of the people. The, the second issue is the fact that whenever the Prophet وسلم, it affected him and it changed his whole demeanor until the, until the extent that it's seen in his face and likewise it was seen in the face of his own companions. And they realized that it affected him in a great manner until they were affected themselves. And that effect was seen in their faces. In their faces. And the pity that they're having uh, and uh, that they're feeling and going through because of the, the, the harm that the Prophet ﷺ felt by that. And how he was affected by that. That somebody would say that they would take him, that they would take Allah as an intercessor to ask from him permission. Do you understand this? This is a major affair. This is a major affair. The Prophet ﷺ did not, did not allow this. <clears throat> did not allow this. So then after this, uh, the, the, the third benefit, أَنَّهُ لَمْ يُنْكِرْ عَلَيْهِ قَوْلَهُ نَسْتَجْفِعُ بِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ And the third issue is that the Prophet ﷺ did not reprimand him or forbid him from saying the statement that we take you as an intercessor with Allah. With Allah. Because this is allowed. Again, in the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ. And here again, they're taking the Prophet ﷺ as an intercessor, meaning they're asking him to call on Allah for a need that they all have. While he's alive. While he's alive. And as for after he died, ﷺ, then the people did not call on him anymore and ask for his intercession. Or ask him to call on Allah for them. After he died, ﷺ, this issue here has ceased. And the companions, they never called on the Prophet Sallallahu to ask him to intercede on their behalf for rain or anything else after he had died. Abu Bakr, he didn't do that. Neither, neither did Umar or Uthman or Ali radiallahu anhum, the four khulafa or anyone after them. Rather, it's mentioned in the time of Umar that there was a drought. In the time of Umar radiallahu anhu, there was a drought. And uh, Umar, he called the people. And he called Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib. Radiallahu anhu was the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then they gather for the, the prayer for rain. And he said, Allahumma inna kunna, inna kunna, nas, uh, uh, inna kunna, ha natawassalu ilayka bi du'ai nabiyika. Allahumma inna kunna natawassalu ilayka bi du'ai nabiyika. Fatasqina, fa al-ana natawassalu ilayka bi. عم بدعاء عم نبيك ففسقنا 
So the, the, the Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, Oh Allah, indeed we used to draw near to you by the supplication of our Prophet and you would send us rain. And now we seek near to you by the supplication of the uncle of the Prophet. So therefore send us rain. Then he said, Taqaddam ya Abbas. Then he said, go forward, Ya Abbas, and, and lead the prayer, and lead the prayer. So here they didn't uh, ask the Prophet وسلم, to intercede. Rather, he said, we used to intercede with the Prophet وسلم, when he was alive, and he would call on you, and you would send us rain. But now he's not alive, but his, his uncle is alive. So now we intercede by way of the uncle of the Prophet وسلم, so send us rain. So therefore, Abbas, lead the prayer. Lead the prayer like this. So... Uh, at this time, uh, and he, it's clear, it's clear that they would not go to the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and ask for his intercession or for them, for him to make du'a for them or anything else after he had died. Rather, this is only allowed to ask somebody for something, to ask somebody for something from the people whenever they're alive, after they're after they're dead. It's not allowed to ask them for anything. This is called du'a, supplication. Wariyadu billah. So the fourth issue now, the author he says that tanbihu ada. Tafsir Subhanallah. Here it is uh, uh, for the fourth issue now, the indication uh, of the interpretation of Subhanallah. And what does Subhanallah mean? And here he's understanding the meaning of this word from this event. This event here, this man, he made a bad statement, placing Allah in a, uh, under his creation. This man, even though maybe he did not mean that or understand the, the gravity of his statement at that time, Again, it's from those examples, a person, he, he made a mistake in the words that he chose. He made a mistake in the words that he chose. But this one is a, is a, is a major mistake here. So the Prophet ﷺ, whenever he heard that mistake, he said, SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. And he meaning, so this statement is a statement that is uh, glorifying Allah above any mistake, above any error, above any weakness, above any, any deficiency, above any need. Allah, He does not need anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is powerful and strong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he, he is the most high and the most lofty. And He has knowledge over all things and the ability to do all things. So He's glorified above, above any deficiency or any defect. And that's the meaning of subhanAllah. So anytime somebody hears somebody say a bad statement or something wrong or do something wrong, this is the time when He will say that, subhanAllah. Something amazing or something yani, that, that, is, that is incorrect. Likewise, he will say, Subhanallah. Subhanallah. He says that and he realizes when he's saying that, 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 that Allah, He is glorified high above any defect or any deficiency. So, Al Khami said, the author, he says, And al Muslimina yasalunahu al istisqa. The fifth issue now is that the Muslims in the life of the Prophet, وسلم, they used to ask him to. Uh, to uh, to call on Allah to send the rain. They used to ask the Prophet ﷺ to call on Allah to send the rain. And again, this was in the lifetime uh, of the Messenger ﷺ. As for after his death, then it's not allowed to ask him or to call on him for anything. Rather, this is considered a uh, major shirk. After this, there is the, the last two chapters remaining, inshallah, we continue in the next class. Have that.